Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I explore Simon Sinek's recent video, Why Tech is Not Always the Solution. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's great to be with you again today for this HCI podcast episode. Today, I'll be exploring Simon Sinek's recent video, Why Tech is Not Always the Solution. We rely extremely heavily on our workplace tech, but sometimes that reliance can become detrimental. We need to think critically about the problem we're trying to solve before employing technology as a default. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. I'm a great believer that any application of technology um, should be to solve a problem, should be to solve a human problem. Um, uh, If if, if the technology can make something work better, then we should be open to it. But so often we implement technology in places just because it's available, because somebody else did it. Um, we have to suffer a real problem that we that we want to that technology can solve. And the amazing thing is, sometimes technology is not the best solution. Um, sometimes leadership thinks that technology is the best solution and never asks the people. As he starts out this video, he makes a really important point that technology should be solving a specific and direct problem that we're trying to resolve. We shouldn't adopt technology just because everyone else is doing it, just because we see someone else. Uh, using it as a quote-unquote best practice, and so we feel like we need to jump on that bandwagon and start utilizing it too. Now, of course, tech companies are going to spin it that way, and they're going to try to sell you their products and services uh, that are tech-oriented, and I'm sure there will be things that and ways that you could benefit from the use of that tech. But The question is, is it really solving any manifesting problem, any big issue that you're having in the organization? Or is it just a solution chasing a problem and ultimately it's going to create more challenges and more problems? That's the question we really need to continually be asking ourselves and not just adopt tech to adopt tech. Don't just do it by default. One of my favorite examples is a manufacturing company that um, um, that realized that they didn't know the, the, the loading of their machines and who was busy and who wasn't busy. And so they spent $3 million on a very, very sophisticated SAP system to tell them all of the what's going on, what machines were busy, what people were busy, the, the status of any particular job, et cetera, et cetera. And all of the information was available. You just had to go screens deep to find it. And here was the problem. They spent all that money and nobody used it. I see this problem in organizations all the time. In fact, I was just in a meeting this morning where we were talking about how an organization invested millions of dollars into this big AI tech solution to try to address a problem. And there was clearly a problem that needed to be dealt with. And but they invested millions into this problem that, frankly, we in the group in the room, we had come up with a much cheaper solution that we'd been implementing successfully in our area for years. And yet nobody could really uh, latch on to it. We couldn't scale it and we couldn't get other people around the organization to utilize our same approach or at least really consider our approach because they just kept on saying well, look, we we have this software. We invested millions in it. We just need to use that. We just need to utilize that instead of doing something that makes makes way more sense, that was way more useful and way cheaper. Uh, So there's this sunk cost fallacy involved in part of that thinking and just people's reliance on technology as the answer, even if something much more simple can uh, produce a good solution. 
And so they asked the people who actually worked on the factory floor, will you fix it? They went to the local uh, stationery store. They bought a bunch of colored folders, uh, red, yellow, green. They bought a bunch of uh, Lucite folders that they pinned on a board and they put the name of every machine on the Lucite board and the name of the job in the folder. And if you were green, it's because you were on schedule. If you were red, it's because uh, you were running late and you needed help. And if you were yellow, you weren't working, your machine was down and you were available to do other work. So you could stand there in front of this board that they spent, probably spent $30 on. Uh, and in an instant, you could see who in the factory was working and who, was, and who wasn't and who needed help. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. How often do we ignore workers on the front lines of organizations, those who actually connect with and interface directly with the customers, those who are on the shop floor or on the factory floor? How often do we not go to them and ask them for solutions to these complex organizational problems? How often do we not lean on and rely on their lived expertise? They may not have a fancy Harvard MBA. They may not have a lot of education. Um, maybe they do, but maybe they don't. And maybe, you know, they're in a blue collar job. And so we think, well, they, they're not going to know how to deal with this. And so we want, we end up investing in a high price consultant or a high cost technology solution and we implement it, integrate it. And then like was said in the earlier clip, nobody ends up using it because it's too complicated. How often does that happen when really, if we just went to the people on the front lines and asked, how would you do this? What would your solution be? And I love in this clip, he, he identifies a completely low cost, I mean, basically no cost solution to the problem that ultimately solved the problem. Uh, the, the solution was there. It was right in front of them. It didn't take any fancy SAP uh, tech uh, or database to try to figure out what was going on. And they were able to resolve it almost immediately. Now, we're not going to be able to run to Home Depot or run to, uh, you know, the office supply store and solve complex problems all the time. Uh, don't get me wrong. And I, I maybe it's a bit of a, um, a straw man argument to make. I understand the problems organizations face are complex. I understand they're messy. And I understand there aren't simple, simple solutions to most things. But we often do make it more complicated than it needs to be. And it's because you have managers, well-meaning managers, but managers and executives sitting in disconnected rooms, having conversations, and they don't bother to ask the people who are actually doing the work, who are actually interfacing with the customers or on the front lines of uh, producing the product or service. We need to lean on that lived expertise more. And I think that's more innovative than simply the application of technology. And so we have to include the people who have to use the technology, tell them the problem, tell them the solution we think will work, but ask them if they have other solutions because sometimes the people in the front lines, the people who actually have to use this stuff are way more knowledgeable than the people who are actually, actually doing the purchasing. Amen. They often are way more knowledgeable 
about utilization of the technology than the people making the decisions or purchasing the new tech. They're the ones that are going to have to implement it. Now, I get that people resist change and there may be a need for a new tech system or tech integration and digital transformation throughout the organization. Uh, we, we can't be afraid of technology, and so we don't want to not adopt something that can be super useful and worth the investment just because we're afraid of tech or we're re resistant to change. That's not what he's arguing. That's certainly not what I'm arguing. The question becomes, you know, is it truly necessary? Is this technology uh, going to actually solve the problem, or is it going to create more problems and, and have unintended consequences that hurt our people on the front lines? Have we gone and talked to, to our people on the front lines? Have we posed the problem to them and asked them what they would do about it? Do they have a solution? Maybe there is a relatively simple solution. Maybe there's not, but maybe there is. And we need to ask the question if we hope to, to be able to uh, drive the types of sustainable solutions with buy-in uh, that we would hope for any organization for any team. Now, if the, if the tech is absolutely essential uh, and digital transformation is necessary utilizing that tech in that area, then we do the hard work of breaking down resistance, creating buy-in, and, and going through the change process and adopting that technology so that we can do our jobs better. I'm all for that. But let's not use it as a default. Let's not automatically assume that some new tech uh, system is going to solve everything. And like Simon says, sometimes it's the really simple solution that's the genius solution. Sometimes that's the biggest innovation, not some new uh, system, some new huge process, or some new uh, technology integration. As long as we can ask ourselves these questions and challenge the assumption that more tech is always good tech, then I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, I hope you stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.